So now in this video, I want to discuss the activation of the innate immune system. So what is happening first when a bacteria is um, introduced into deeper tissue? It will be created by the innate immune system. So let's suppose we're sitting, hanging out in a jacuzzi and on the way out, bang, we're going to hit a nail in our big toe. And unfortunately on this nail, were some bacteria sticking and now we introduce them into deeper tissue. So who is going to recognize this bacteria and who is going to fight against this bacteria who's going to kill that so the bacterium that is introduced into deeper tissue will be first greeted by the innate immune system and then throughout our tissue as a key players of the innate immune system we have so-called guards stationed so they're just going to are resident to the tissue just going to hang out there and see if something interesting is happening now one guard that i have drawn here is a macrophage that we're going to first now discuss and then there's a second guard into in the tissue which is an intrinsic cell let's first talk about the macrophage so the macrophage is a big eater so macro stands greek for big and phage is Greek for eater, so it's a big eater. So it's basically eating up all the stuff that it can find. And obviously, if it finds bacteria, it's going to be very excited. So we're going to give the macrophage the slogan, eat and call, because what it does really is eating up stuff, but also calling for help. So it's one of the cells that likes to call its kind of local friends from the nearby road. And we're going to see in a second how the macrophage does it. So it's eating up stuff, and this is done by a process called phagocytosis. So there are receptors on the surface of the macrophage that can recognize pathogens and then initiate phagocytosis. So there are phagocytic receptors. Now, how does a macrophage call for help? Well, first of all, how does a macrophage just detect that there's something going on and that it, it should call for help? Well, the macrophage is equipped with so-called pathogen recognition receptors. So they are abbreviated as PRRs, pathogen recognition receptors. And the name already tells you what these receptors do. They recognize pathogens. They don't recognize if something is from your own. They recognize just an invader. There's something wrong here. They can tell details, but they can say, well, there's probably a bacteria invading us, or there's probably a virus. They can just tell us classes. And important examples for pathogen recognition receptors are, for example, TLRs, toll-like receptor, that you're going to hear later more about. So now this pathogen recognition receptor will kind of send a signal to the nucleus once they detect something like a bacteria and then start with the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines. So the name already tells you what they do. Pro-inflammation. They trigger inflammation. So what is inflammation? Well, how is your nail toe going to look like when you hit a nail in the big toe? Well, it's going to be red, hot and swollen. That's inflammation. So how can they trigger that? Well, so TNF and R1 are important examples for pro-inflammatory cytokines. And what they do is they mediate a smooth muscle dilation so that there can be more blood coming in. Therefore, we have redness because there's just more blood flow. Then there's also swelling because there's increased capillary pressure. And because there's more redness, there's also heat. And that's what they are going to predominantly trigger. Cytokines are just little hormone-like molecules, are kind of the words of the immune system, how uh, immune cells are going to talk to each other. Now, also, the macrophage will start producing chemokines. Chemokines are like traffic directors of the immune system because they make really the attract the cells and make sure that cells can exit where they're supposed to go. So an important chemokine that the macrophage are, is producing in the beginning of an infection is CXCL8. And this is a chemokine that you're going to find then here pro, um, secreted by the macrophage. And actually, there are respective receptors on neutrophils. So this is the CXCL8 receptor. 
So the neutrophil is actually the friend of the macrophage. And this is a cell that is going to get recruited from the nearby road, meaning the nearby blood vessel, which I've drawn here. So this is a blood vessel nearby. And so the neutrophil will kind of smell that there are these chemokines and will move toward this direction. So it will slow down and will then extravasate a process that we're going to discuss later in detail and also start eating up pathogens. We're going to give the neutrophil the slogan eat and die because it's also a very good phagocytic cell as a macrophage is eating up the pathogen, but then it has just a very short half-life and it's going to die. So here it's just weeping, it's dying off because it has a very short lifespan. So that's a neutrophil, kind of the friend of the macrophage that gets recruited, which is kind of on call. It's always in the blood. And once it's needed, the macrophage kind of calls for help and the neutrophil gets and helps, helps to clear the infection. So we have now discussed the macrophage and the neutrophil. Now there's another cell, very important, which is stationed in the tissue. So, so far we had just one guard, the macrophage. The neutrophil is on call, so it's not kind of stationary, stationary in tissue. But now we're going to discuss the dendritic cell. So this is another stationary cell. And um, we're going to give it the slogan, eat, show and run. Because the dendritic cell is also a very good phagocytic cell. It also can eat up pathogens like bacteria, but then will present part of it. The slogan is eat, show and run. And it eats up stuff and then it pre presents it via MHC molecules. And then just a part of this bacteria, and therefore I also choose now the same color, a part of this bacteria will be presented via MHC molecule. So MHC molecule, we're going to discuss in another video more in detail, but you can now just think about it as a cup holder, as a way to show stuff. And so the dendritic cell is now this important part of the innate immune system that will show stuff and run off. And it's running off because this is a cell that will get us the expert. This is a cell that will get help. And this is a cell that really needs to do the sophisticated job of getting into a lymph vessel. So this is the afferent lymphatic vessel. Gets to the lymph vessel. And because we have now here inflammation, because we have increased capillary pressure, because we have increased blood flow, there's also the chance that this dendritic cell will get into the afferent lymphatic vessel and end up in a lymph node. In the lymph node, it hopefully can activate the adaptive immune cells, particularly the T cells. And the T cell will also then become a T helper cell, will help a B cell become activated. The job of the B cell is going to make antibodies and then eventually these weapons, here an example we can say the antibodies, are going to travel back via the efferent lymphatic vessel, via the thoracic duct, are going to show up in the blood, are going to exit here where these little gaps are and help clear the infection. So now I want to discuss the activation of the adaptive immune system. And we just finished by saying that the dendritic cell is a sophisticated cell that will do the job of kind of activating and getting the experts. Before we're going to go now to the lymph node, I want to introduce you to the experts. And here they are. This is a T cell and the B cell. So let's just generally talk about them without a lot of specifics. So a very important consideration is that the T cell that is made in the bone marrow and then get some extra tra training in the thymus and now we're going to encounter it in the lymph node is a so-called naive t-cell so a naive t-cell is a cell that cannot do a job in terms of participating in getting rid of the pathogen so this is a naive cell this is just ready generally ready to be become activated but can't do anything by itself 
Now, there are two types of T cells, so-called CD4 T cells, which I've drawn here with a little 4 on its surface, and CD8 T cells with a little 8 sticking on its surface. We're going to discuss them later in more detail, but now we're just going to say there's two types of T cells. The one is called a CD4, the other is called a CD8 T cell, and once they become activated, once they become activated and expand, then they become effector T cells. That means then once something has activated them, they can really participating in getting rid of the pathogen. They can really do stuff. They are effector molecules. They can, they, they can have an effect on the immune system. They can have an effect on the pathogen. Now, a CD4 T cell becomes, when it's, once it's activated, a so-called T helper cell. And the name already says, well, a T helper cell is just a cell that helps other cells to do a better job. We're going to discuss this more in detail later. Um, a CD8 T cell becomes a T killer cell. And as the name already implies, a killer cell can kill other cells. Now, again, what is the most important consideration is that we have to distinguish naive T cells from effector T cells. And I have also visually shown that, that here the nucleus is blue shaded, which really sh should um, remind you that this is a completely different cell. This has a different genetic material, and this can really help in the immune response, meaning in getting rid of the pathogen. Whereas this is just a naive cell, it's ready educated, it's ready to become activated, but it cannot yet do anything. Now, we give the T cell the slogan, help or kill, because there are these two subtypes, and either this T cell will later, once it is an effector, help other cells to do a better job or be a killer. Now we're going to get to the B cell, just briefly introducing the B cell. So the B cell also, when we encounter it in the lymph node, it is a so-called naive B cell. So it has kind of B cell receptors on its surface, and um, it can become activated. And once it becomes activated and clonally expand, expands, it can become a plasma cell. So now the job of the B cell, and that's also what it, what I gave it as a slogan, is spit antibodies. So B cells are our antibody factories. But again, not the naive B cell, because the naive B cell does not contribute to getting rid of the pathogen. Only the effector B cell can do it. So once the naive B cell has become activated, it can do a job. And the job of the B cell is to make antibodies, to spit antibodies. Now, we call the effector B cell also a plasma cell. So now, as we have just introduced them very broadly, we can now go to the lymph node and really think about what happens. And I want to split it up into two parts. We're going to first discuss how our T cells activated, and then we're going to discuss how our B cells activated. So let's start looking at the T cells. Already mentioned a couple of times, the T cells that have been made in the bone marrow got some extra training in the thymus, will then eventually go into so-called secondary lymphoid tissues. One example is the lymph node. And here they're just going to hang out and see if somebody gets them activated. For the T cells, and this is a, these are the naive T cells, they all have a T cell receptor on their surface. And very importantly, each T cell is unique, so they have all different T cell receptors on their surface, which eventually will recognize an antigen. The dendritic cell is this important cell that will eventually activate the T cells. Now, the dendritic cell, we already said, is one of the scars that has a slogan, eat, show, and run. It eats up stuff, shows it on its hands. Well, um, cells don't have hands, so they show it via MHC, so this is this cup holder. It has here a little peptide from the bacteria, and now we'll go in a kind of speed dating to all these different unique T cells and see if one of these T cell receptor will recognize this peptide that it has, which is proud, which is proudly presenting. So it will just host a lot of visits each minute, thousands of visits each minute, and figure out is there a t naive T cell that can become activated.
Once it has found one, and we're just going to pose, this is the lucky guy now. This is the one that will become activated by this dendritic cell. This naive T cell, this one, will clo get activated, clonally expand. And now we're going to make thousands of copies of this T cell, not any of the other, uh, this T cell. And now we have an activated T cell. And we're also going to just write in here now, this will be an effector T cell. And again, there are two different types. There could be either CD4, or CD8. For bacterial infection, we're going to, if it's an extracellular bacteria, we get mainly CD4. But we don't want to worry about it now. We're just going to pose this is supposed to be a CD4 T cell. So they are all going to be the daughter cells and all going to be CD4 effector T cells, as we said before, this is a T helper cell. So now we have activated this naive cell, T cell. It has become an effector, and this is now a cell that can really help us to get rid of the infection. This is a, C, a T helper cell is now just became activated here in the lymph node. And obviously, we're going to use the example that we started the story with having hit a nail in our big toe. Having hit a nail in our big toe. And now, obviously, it doesn't help us if we have now this effector T cell in the lymph node. We need to get it back. How will it get back? Well, this effector T cells will get back via the efferent lymphatic vessel. And then we'll go via the thoracic duct. And then it's just going to show up here in the blood vessel. So let's draw in here this T cell, this effector T cells. We're going to use this shaded nucleus here just to remind us that this is now the effector T cell. It has a T cell receptor on its surface. Let's draw this similar. It's CD4. We don't worry about this right now. But this is our T helper cell. And this will now also use these little gaps here, and there's also several chemokines that will attract it. And so that's how it will get to the site of infection and will help clear the infection. You might now wonder, so how does it help clear the infection? A T helper cell helps other cells to do a better job. So for example, it will activate the macrophage to phagocytose better, to express more PRRs, it will just generally help other cells to do a better job. So now we're going to go back in the lymph node. And after we have now discussed how T cells are activated, now I want to discuss how B cells are activated. The B cell is our humble cell. The B cell is the cell that actually doesn't need somebody to come in person and activate it. We saw with the T cell that actually the dendritic cell needs to come and activate it in person. So it's a pretty sophisticated process to have somebody come and activate the cell. So the B cell is not that way. The B cell is a humble cell because it just takes like little pathogen fragments that are swamped over into the lymph node. And this is something that can activate a B cell. Now you might wonder, so how do we get here some pathogen fragments in the lymph node? Well, let's go back to our picture where we started this story and look at um, the place of the infection, which is in the big toe. What we can see here when the macrophage are eating up the bacteria, they actually don't eat with a closed mouth, as you want to you can picture that in that way. There's always stuff coming out, and these are pathogen fragments. So when they are phagocytosing, there's always little remnants kind of that are going to come out of their mouth. And these little, little pathogen fragments will eventually get into the afferent lymphatic vessel. Why? Because again, the macrophage set the stage. The macrophage produced this pro-inflammatory environment where there's increased capillary pressure, more blood flow. So stuff gets into this one-way street into the afferent lymphatic vessel. So now let's go back to the lymph node. And here we are. Here is this little pathogen fragment that's just coming in via this afferent lymphatic vessel. 
And this is now something that can activate a pizza. So now here's the naive pizza. Like, and this is this pizza that cannot yet do anything. It has a pizza receptor on its surface and it's nothing else than a membrane stuck antibody. Now, this pathogen fragments can, if they, if the pizza receptor recognizes this, it can activate the pizza and shows part of what it has eaten also on MHC molecules. And now the T helper cell that we just made in the lymph node actually will also help to activate the pizza. So it's a pretty complicated process that I don't want to go now into detail, but we're just going to pose now, okay, we need a pathogen fragment. We need a T helper cell around to help the B cell become activated. And that that's what you need to have a B cell clonally expand and become an effector B cell. Now the effector B cell is this B cell that really can do something. And what is the job of the B cell? To make antibodies. The B cell that makes antibodies can be also called a plasma cell. Now again, it doesn't help us if we have the antibodies around now in the lymph node, because where we really need it is at the site of infection, where we hit the nail in our big toe, because that's where the bacteria are. So now these antibodies can also go back via the efferent lymphatic vessel, via the thoracic duct, into the blood, and then they're going to show up again here. So let's draw in here into the blood some antibodies because that's where we're going to find it. And they also will get through this little gaps here at the site of infection. And these antibodies will help them also clear the infection because these antibodies might be able to neutralize the pathogen and might do other things that we're going to discuss later. But now you just got a one run through through the immune system. You learned how the innate immune system is ready immediately with its guard stationed with the macrophage, with the dendritic cell that immediately do stuff. They immediately phagocytose. They immediately start showing and getting help. We also learned that there is a kind of a local friend from the macrophage that is kind of on duty, that is always ready to exit if the macrophage calls. And then we learned that the T and B cells are hanging around in the lymph node and are just waiting to become activated. We learn that the T cell needs the dendritic cell to come over in the lymph node and personally activate it. And we also learned that uh, pathogen fragments are enough basically to get a B cell activated if there is also some T cell help there and then eventually be lead to the activation of the B cell, becoming a plasma cell, making antibodies, and then the antibodies travel back to the site of infection and help clear the infection. So this concludes the video on a short overview of innate and adaptive immune response to extracellular bacteria.